न स्त्री स्वातंत्र्यम अर्हति इज ए कॉन्ट्रवर्शियल मिस अंडरस्टुड पैसेज इन दि मनुस्मृति दिस इज ओनली द टेल एंड ऑफ ए वर्ड्स ऑन विच एन इन्वेंटेड मीनिंग विमेन डू नॉट डिजर्व फ्रीडम इज इम्पोस्ड इन फैक्ट द वर्ड्स इन क्वेश्चन टॉक्स अबाउट विमेन सेफ्टी विच वॉज क्लोजली मिस्टेकन फॉर देयर फ्रीडम Even notable legal professionals are heard delivering the same rhetoric and more terrible when it comes out from a few Sanskrit professors this subject matter and the indifference towards Sanskrit language are interconnected probably this misunderstanding is due to the influence of colloquial speech and the local meaning of the word swatantryam which of course is freedom in fact this verse talks about women's safety and has nothing to do with their freedom now the verse in question is pita rakshati kaumare bharta rakshati yauvane rakshanti sthavire putraha na stri swatantrya marhati so the translators have cut apart only the tail end of the verse na stri swatantrya marhati and imposed an invented meaning that is women do not deserve freedom This misinterpretation has been in circulation for years and remains largely misconstrued even today. Before going into the subject, may I make it clear that our intention is neither to make a blanket endorsement of all that the Manusmriti says nor to keep under wraps the tenets of Manusmriti. Rather, we would confine the discussion within the boundaries of a pure academic exercise. In fact the condemnation of Manusmriti has a long history decades ago Dr Baba Saheb Ambedkar burned the Manusmriti the issue was related to untouchability and then a few years ago an angry mob in Kerala set a fire copies of the Manusmriti this time the reason was women's independence this brings to mind a story of a few visually impaired persons going to see an elephant after touching the leg one of them declared elephant is like a pillar the second one felt its stomach and then screamed hey look here elephant is like a rock and the third person replied no no elephant is like a brush because he had touched on its tail similar is the case here they did not pay any attention to the whole picture they did not mind the preceding and succeeding discussions and even the context now pita father bharta husband and putra children are the persons destined to take care of the woman at three different phases of her life such as kaumare in her childhood yauvane in her youth and sthavire bhave in her old age the verb rakshati stands for taking care of and is used in its plural form as rakshanti in the third line rakshanti sthavire putraha to agree with the plural noun putraha among her caretakers pita father and bharta husband are in singular and putraha children in plural it is so because in sanskrit reference to a class or a group is made using the singular form of a noun if every member of that group shares similar characteristics and such a reference is equally applicable to all its members just like generic nouns that refer to all members of a class or group for example an apple is a healthy food stands to mean that apples are good to health similarly pita or father and bharta or husband refers to every father and husband whereas putraha children used in plural serves a specific purpose what is that it refers to both male and female here the grammar rule of panini puman striya is applied the rule says that wherever a given word in its feminine and masculine gender in the same number and case has to be compounded then the masculine word shall be retained so putraha shall be understood as both putraha male children and putriyaha female children it means that the offspring may it be female or male is responsible to take care of the woman in her old age
in short sons and daughters share equal responsibility in protecting their mother generally there will be only one verb in a sentence or in a verse but here there are two verbs namely rakshati and arhati both rakshati and arhati are verbs in present tense present tense is used not only to refer to an action taking place at the time it is mentioned about but also to convey several other features of a verb in this context the grammar rule of panini dhatu sambandhe pratyayaha is applied this rule sanctions the random use of verbs in different tenses and moods when there is a syntactical relation between the senses of the verbs here the verb rakshati repeated in the first two lines and then in plural in the third line and arhati in the last line are contextually interconnected by virtue of the said rule the present tense rakshati assumes the imperative mood like rakshatu while arhati remains in simple present tense so pita rakshati kaumare means father may take care in childhood similarly husband may take care in youth and children may take care in old age and therefore nastri swatantryam arhati which means that a woman shall not set out to defend herself hey how come nastri swatantryam arhati means woman shall not set out to defend herself here stri that means woman is used as a generic noun as it was in the case of pita father and bharta husband mentioned above hence the word stri stands to refer to every woman swatantryam means prime importance and self effort na arhati means doesn't deserve now again how does the word swatantryam mean prime importance or self effort generally the word swatantryam refers to the extent of personal liberty and free will however an important point to note is that a verb is capable of expressing several meanings there are two components in the word swatantryam and they are swa and tantra swa means of or by one's own self otherwise something that belongs to one's own self and tantra in this context means prime importance and self effort or to take care of a celebrated sanskrit dictionary called the amarakoshaha elucidates several meanings of the word tantra such as tantram pradhane siddhante sutravaye parichade among these meanings the contextually suitable meaning of the word swatantra is prime importance and endeavor or effort in self protection and swatantryam refers to the state or condition in which one endeavors to take care of one's own self so hope it may not be difficult any more to understand the specific contextual meaning of the word swatantryam similarly there is at another verse in the manusmriti where the word aswatantra is used and the verse is aswatantra striya karya purushaihi swair divanisham visayeshu cha sajjantya samsthapya atmano vashe this should be understood as providing constant protection without themselves setting out for that now there could be a question what if a woman says i know how to defend myself why do men do that who are they to protect me this would have been intriguing if it were asked then but now times have changed in fact this verse also has several noteworthy elements such as purushaihi swaihi which means by her own men meaning father husband brothers and friends it doesn't say men should protect their women evidently because the freedom to choose men was vested with the women so such usages require careful consideration to extract the contextual meaning in every verse manusmriti extols women pitrubhir bhratrubhischaitah patibhir devaraistatha 
పూజ్య భూషయితవ్యాశ్చ బహు కళ్యాణమీప్సుభి ఫాదర్స్ బ్రదర్స్ హస్బెండ్స్ అండ్ బ్రదర్స్ ఇన్ లో హ్యావ్ టు రెస్పెక్ట్ దమ్ అడోన్ దమ్ ఫర్ ది గుడ్ ఆఫ్ ఓల్ అండ్ దెన్ ఎత్ర నార్యస్తు పూజ్యంతే రమందే తత్ర దేవతా ఎత్రయితాస్తు న పూజ్యంతే సర్వాస్ తత్రాఫలా క్రియా ఇట్స్ ఎ డివైన్ అబౌట్ వేర్ విమెన్ ఆర్ రెస్పెక్టెడ్ అదర్వైజ్ ఎవ్రీ హ్యూమన్ ఎండెవర్ ఈస్ ఫ్యూటైల్ సిమిలర్లీ శోచంతి జామయో ఎత్ర వినశ్యత్యాశు తత్కులం న శోచంతి తు ఎత్రయితా వర్ధతే తద్ధి సర్వదా ది ఎంటైర్ ఫ్యామిలీ ఈస్ బౌండ్ టు రూ ఇన్ వేర్ ఇట్స్ జామీ ఈస్ సఫర్ అండ్ సచ్ ఫ్యామిలీస్ విల్ డెఫినెట్లీ ఫ్లరిష్ వేర్ దే ఆర్ వెల్ టేకెన్ కేర్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ అనదర్ ప్లేస్ మనస్మృతి అడ్వైజెస్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ టు టేక్ అట్ మోస్ట్ కేర్ ఇన్ ప్రొటెక్టింగ్ ది విమెన్ ఫర్ ఈఫ్ విమెన్ ఆర్ లెఫ్ట్ అండ్ ప్రొటెక్టెడ్ ఇట్ విల్ బ్రింగ్ సోరో టు టూ ఫ్యామిలీస్ సూక్ష్మేభ్యోపి ప్రసంగేభ్య స్త్రీయో రక్ష్య విశేషత ద్వయో కులయో శోకమావహేయురక్షిత అండ్ ఇట్ ఎర్జస్ ఎవరీ మ్యాన్ టు గో టు ఎనీ ఎక్స్టెంట్ టు టేక్ కేర్ ఆఫ్ హిస్ వైఫ్ బికాస్ వెన్ షీ ఈస్ ప్రొటెక్టెడ్ ఎ మ్యాన్ ప్రొటెక్ట్స్ నాట్ ఓన్లీ హర్ బట్ ఆల్సో హిస్ చిల్డ్రన్ హిస్ క్యారెక్టర్ ఆఫ్ బీయింగ్ ఎ డాటింగ్ ఫాదర్ అండ్ కేరింగ్ హస్బెండ్ హిస్ ఫ్యామిలీ ఫ్రమ్ అనెండింగ్ యాంగ్విష్ హిస్ ఓన్ సెల్ఫ్ and his duty as a man as a brother as a husband as a father swam prasutim charitram cha kula atmanam eva cha swam cha dharmam prayatnena jayam rakshan hi rakshati the manusmriti and the ancient indians had nothing as precious as their progeny and a girl is a goddess in the abode the subject matter of this discussion and the attacks on sanskrit language are also interconnected the major contention is that sanskrit is dead declaring something dead because of being unaware of its presence is so unsighted and another controversy is that sanskrit is biased which is also a blind standpoint the fact is that this civilization has always held the wise and the learned in high esteem the intellectual contributions in sanskrit were made by scholars from different walks of life but understanding that requires training in the fundamentals of sanskrit another argument is that sanskrit is too technical and hence it is beyond the reach of the masses had so for being too technical because it preserves many of our prehistoric intellectual treasures intact in fact manusmriti is a book on ethics code of conduct and the like these codes of conduct are subject to change depending on the requirements of the society which smritis themselves proclaim and that is how about 28 smritis came into being and manusmriti is only one among them so from this perspective manusmriti had become obsolete centuries ago however we should not look down upon it at least for two reasons one that the text in itself has cultural and historic representation of our nation as it has scores of subjects like virtues and vices do's and don'ts social etiquettes socio religious and psychological aspects of ancient indian life and second it's a text written in sanskrit study of which is essential in the cultivation of many linguistic aspects